Hey folks, this is a short introduction to AMPL's Application Programming Interfaces for General Languages, or AMPL's APIs. We've noticed that many of you have discovered and are beginning to use AMPL's APIs for Python, R, MATLAB, Java, C++, and C Sharp. It's fantastic that those are useful to you. We hope you continue. And this video is for those of you who maybe haven't heard of or haven't had a chance to experiment with AMPL's APIs before. We're going to begin by describing a very typical AMPLE workflow written only in the AMPLE modeling language, and then offer some suggestions for how and why we may want to use APIs to extend or integrate that AMPLE program with other things. Let's say if we were using Python, we could extend it to anything in the Python universe, applications that share data across Python, or applications you build in Python yourself. Right, let's get started. So AMPLE's interpreter takes an AMPL model that we've written in the AMPL modeling language and a flat file written in the AMPL data syntax containing our data and combines the model and data into a problem and then sends the problem to a solver, the solver solves a problem and returns a solution to AMPL. Now you're all very familiar with this. If we need a different solver, let's say we've been using a linear solver but now our formulation has become nonlinear with one command, we can switch out the solver for another and again, off we go. Many of you would also be familiar with scripting some programmatic type control, some kind of functionality uh, to control your AMPL model and data and solver with. And typically you would embody that in a script file written in the AMPL scripting language. Um, using the AMPL scripting language, you can specify specific models, data sets, specific solvers, specific solver options. You can drop constraints and add constraints in your model, change out objective functions, set default va values for variables, many, many things that the AMPL scripting language enables. In addition to basic looping and iteration, essentially turning our AMPL model into an application of its own. Now, many of you would also be familiar with connecting this type of AMPL application to an external data source, let's say Microsoft Excel. In this case, we might decide not to use flat files and instead hold all of our input data in Excel and output all of our solution data to Excel. This makes it easy to graph and chart our solution data and to share the solution with others in our organization because everybody's familiar with Excel. We would use AMPL's data interface to Excel to achieve this. And many of you are probably very familiar with this. It's been around for some time. That same data interface can also enable connections to uh, MySQL and SQL type databases. In fact, AMPL has a number of data interfaces and table handlers for uh, quite a variety of relational databases. Right, so the first place we may want to use an API is to augment our data interface. Let's say we use the API for Python and specifically we do so so that we can access a database that is in the cloud using Python's support for REST and JSON data interchange formats. Now this database can be anything because by the time the data gets to AMPL, it is passed to AMPL from Python in a format that AMPL expects. This is enabled by the API, so we essentially can access any data source we might want. Okay, so what else can the AMPL Python API enable if not just data connections? Well, it turns out that we can also programmatically control our model using the API, meaning that the API can not only interface with AMPL's data side, but also with AMPL's model and script files. Essentially, what you write in your AMPL script file now becomes a choice to either write in the continue to embody it in the AMPL script language, or to rewrite or maybe start from scratch some kind of programmatic functions in Python, if you're more familiar with that, or if you've been given a Python application that has to have some kind of control over an AMPL session. Right. So the APIs enable data and programmatic control over every aspect of AMPL. This is very useful because now you might have, let's say, a large ERP system like Epicore or SAP that you need to interface with AMPL, no problem, through the API. You might have some very interesting uh, data visualization libraries, let's say like Bucket in the Python universe that, again, through the AMPL API can uh, access AMPL solution data uh, very readily. This is a very, very basic example of how AMPL's APIs might be useful to you in integrating your AMPL application with the broader world using general languages. 
Hopefully this has been a useful introduction. Please check out the links in the description below for how to download and get started using the Ample APIs for your favorite language. Take care.